Chacos are some of the most hated and beloved sandals in footwear history. So I bought a pair to cut them apart to see kind of what they're all about. So Saturday's video is going to be probably my most favorite video I've ever had planned up to this point in my YouTube career. So if you watched long enough, you've probably seen Toaster kind of sauntering around in his cat harness. Well, Saturday, I'm going to attempt to make the most expensive cat harness in the world. I'm gonna use the most expensive leather in the world, which is shell cordovan, and make all the hardware out of solid gold, and uh, it's gonna be really fun. So I just thought I'd give you guys a heads up so you could mentally prepare yourself for that video. And if you do have a cat and you're wanting to make one by yourself or on your own, the template will be available for free download. So prepare yourselves. Now to the shoes, or the sandals, whatever they are. So the brand of these sandals is Chaco. The style is the Z1 with the pizza strap. And the reason I got the pizza strap is because this is one continuous strap and I thought it'd be cool to make the pizza strap into like a little lanyard for my keys. Um, and so I'll probably make an extra one or two to give away. So if you wanna win a pizza lanyard Chaco strap with some leather accents, um, go to my Instagram, at rose underscore amble. Give me a follow and watch my story on how to win them. And then the price of these are $105, just the retail price, not on sale. You can get them on Amazon for a lot cheaper. Like these were, I think $60 on Amazon. So check Amazon first, they're like half the price. And as for where they're made, I don't really know where they're made. I, I didn't see a tag on here anywhere and nowhere in the packaging to say they're, where they're made. Um, but I know for sure that in 2008, Chaco moved their manufacturing from Colorado to China. So I'm assuming they're still made in China and I'll find out tomorrow. It's too late to call their customer support and I'll put it down here of where they're actually manufactured. So what's the goal behind this video? Um, after we did the Birkenstocks video, people really, really wanted to see the Chacos and Tevas or Tevas if you're fancy be cut in half or cut apart. And so I thought we'd start with Chaco because the Chacos because I have strong feelings about Chacos. I think they're the most hideous shoes in the entire world or sandals in the entire world. But I think every single person I know owns a pair of these and they swear by them, they love them and uh, they're willing to sacrifice the style for the comfort and durability and look, tan lines maybe of the Chacos. And I've always just kind of been interested in why people love these so much. So the three questions I want to answer from this video are how does this continuous strap work? Like when it goes through the midsole, is there an extra protective layer down there? Or is it literally just like a little tunnel that goes through? I'm, I just wanna know kind of how that works. The second question is, what does this cross section look like? How thick is the midsole? Is there any voids in there? How thick is the outsole? Just a general cross section of how this shoe works. The third one is, one thing that I really think is cool about these is that they, they say there's only eight parts in this entire shoe, which is, I think is really cool. So I wanna just dissect it and lay all the eight parts out and just see what those eight parts are and how it's built. So now let's start with cutting those strap beds out and kind of seeing how these this continuous strap setup works. Okay, I got the continuous strap channel cut out and in hindsight, this makes way more sense, but for some reason I thought that the strap would go halfway through the midsole, but it actually is sandwiched and glides between the outsole and the bottom of the midsole. That makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking for some reason. And, and it makes sense manufacturing wise because all you have to do is injection mold this midsole and then instead of trying to create a channel in the midsole, all I do is create these two little slits, or I guess the five or however many slits there are in there, and then thread it through and then glue or bond the outsole to the midsole. So very smartly constructed. A lot smarter than I thought it was. I, I'm kind of embarrassed to, to say that I thought that it went right through the midsole, but whatever, everyone makes mistakes. So next what I'm gonna do is cut the rest of these channels out, get the straps pulled out, and then cut the entire shoe in half so you can see a cross section.
All right, we got it all the way cut in half, and I feel like it doesn't really need one of those reveal shots because really all it is is a super thick layer of polyurethane foam, PU foam, and then fairly thin rubber outsole. It's pretty tough to cut apart. You know, that's a lot of foam to go through. Right in that arch support area, it's about an inch thick. At the heel, three quarters of an inch. At the toe, half an inch. So that's a lot of foam to go through. Um, cutting it apart, I noticed it does, it does break fairly easily once you've got it cut, but like how often are you gonna actually cut a pair of sandals like this? So much foam. I thought for sure there'd be some voids in there, but it's just one solid thick piece of foam. As for the outsole, it is fairly thin in some spots. If I take my little caliper, at the really low spots, it's three millimeters. The high spots, six and a half millimeters. But with, you know, these are these are one of those shoes where you could technically get them resold if you needed to. It's a really hard to make a judgment call on any of this when this is like my second pair of sandals I've ever torn apart and the first pair of adventure sandals I've ever torn apart. So it's more of an exploratory video than anything. So next thing we're gonna do is try to separate all the layers, lay them out and figure out what the eight parts of this uh, sandal really are. So let's do that. All right, I got it all the way torn apart. So let's make our way through the eight layers of the Chaco sandal. Um, starting from the smallest, going to the largest. And there really is only seven component parts to this. I don't, it's weird that they count this first piece, which is the little tag. And on the tag it says made in China. So now we know these are made in China. But next largest is the buckle that cinches the straps down on your foot, right here. Next is the heel strap that wraps around the back of your heel. That's a different strap, it's not one continuous one. Next is the thinner strap. That's actually the little extension strap that goes through their little buckle, this one right here. It's not quite as thick as the other straps, like this heel strap and the strap that goes all the way through the sole of the shoe. Then the actual strap that goes underneath of the heel is a doubled up layer of this thinner uh, polyester. Next largest would be the outsole. So one interesting thing that I've always heard about Chacos is they used to use a Vibram sole or Vibram if you're fancy um, and then they changed their proprietary blend of rubber for their outsole and I've always heard people say that the Vibram outsoles were better. Um, so maybe one day we'll get to a point we, where we have the right equipment to be able to test some of the, the characteristics between the two different outsoles and maybe identify which one's better. Moving to the polyurethane midsole, we talked about how thick this thing is before and kind of went over it before, so we'll just skip past that. And then finally, the biggest piece or the longest piece is this super long strap that's weaved all the way through the midsole. I did not expect it to be that long. It's crazy how long this turned out to be. So now that we've torn everything apart, what do I think of the Chaco sandals? I still think they're the ugliest shoes ever made, but I definitely have a new appreciation for these sandals after tearing them apart. Like this continuous strap idea is a really cool idea. It's just, I just find it interesting that they, they can do it with a single strap for the most part. Is it worth the price? For $105, it's a lot of money. If you can find them on sale, I think it's a, it's a more reasonable price, but a lot of my friends that buy Chacos, they buy them because they're canyoneering. They're buying them because they're using them um, in boats and doing like river tours and stuff in the summer. And they, they, they buy them as a piece of equipment almost. So if you're buying them for that, I get the price and I, I can see how someone could uh, pretty easily justify the price of these. If you're just using them for um, a few times a year, sandals that you are gonna go on a few hikes, it's a pretty steep price. I'd rather have a pair of boots personally. But I get it. The one thing that concerned me maybe the most was how easily this polyurethane midsole would just break after it started to be um, cut.
cut. I was getting really nitpicky. Actually, if you if you guys have owned a pair of Chacos, is it, what fails first on these? Is it is it the midsole that fails first, or what is it you wear through the outsole? Let me know what fails first. We've kind of been on a sneaker kick because it's summer and doing a few sandals here and there. So once fall comes back around, we'll start doing some more boots. We've got some really cool stuff coming up. And uh, prepare yourselves for Saturday's video with Toaster's most expensive cat harness in the world video. So thanks for everything you guys do. See ya.